turn your Bibles over it while you're seated into Exodus, the 34th chapter, amen, we'll have a biblical preaching, Bible study, kind of getting together kind of thing, amen, from the 34th chapter of Exodus, and just so that you'll have this to reference, um, 5 through 9, we're not going to read it now, but in a, in a minute we'll read it. I'm going to talk about who me. Or should I slow that down and say who me? me? Oh. <laughs> who me? My, my. <laughs> David <coughs> has been addressed in Scripture as a man after God's own heart. And oftentimes we have heard that, but many times if you ask Christians what that means, they can't tell you. What is a man or woman that's after God's own heart? And what kind of heart does God have that he would share it with man and that it would stand out uh, in monument as a praise toward him, that I found somebody that is after my own heart. Mm -hmm. What kind of heart does God have? What kind of heart was it that David possessed? And that is why I had you to turn to Exodus, the 34th chapter, the 6th verse. But let's back up. It says, And the Lord descended in a cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands and forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third, even to the fourth generation. As a result of this, verse 8, verse eight states that Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worship. That is the heart of God. That God is merciful and gracious. He forgives iniquity and transgressions. He is long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy, he said, for thousands and forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sins, but on the flip side, will not clear the guilty. Almost sounds like a contradiction. I'm so glad for mercy. God's divine flag. Hello, somebody. Yes, sir. I said to our congregation, it, when God want to cheat, he called it mercy. <laughs> Come on, I'm just going to talk to you for a minute. Now, you got to go home and think about that. Amen. On, he is righteous and just, but he is sometimes as confusing as a sports official on the field <laughs> when he dropped that flag. Mm. I don't care what type, type of touchdowns or points have been made, but when the umpire the ref throw that flag. The people who gain are sad, but the people who stand to gain by the callback, they're happy. And that's how God does. God, when we think that somebody ought to get what they got coming, God throw a flag. You'll see where I'm going in a minute. David is a man after God's own heart. The clearest reflection of that heart has been read in our hearing. And David was chosen for that fact that wow. he reflected God, that he was in the image of the heart of God, that the things of God flowed through yes, David. And David set him on the throne with great expectations that he would have his father's eyes and his father's heart. That's interesting to me. 
that he would sit upon the throne and he would judge the people of Israel with the same heart as God. And he starts off by saying that I am a God of mercy and grace. Something happens in his reign that calls this issue into question. And it comes to him in the form of a parable and a riddle. The prophet Nathan is sent to him while he sits upon his ivory throne, looking down the vista of his marvelous and glorious existence with his court standing about him, Nathan approaches the throne for audience to place before him this riddle. There were two men, one was rich and the other poor. The rich man had a whole bunch of stuff. But the poor man had one little ewe lamb. He described the ewe lamb and how closely knit they were together as a family. And he, he had brought this ewe lamb up with his children and was unto him as a daughter. And a wayfaring, and a wayfaring man, help me somebody, and a wayfaring man came. And rather than pick from his own flocks to prepare dinner for the wayfaring man, he hopped the fence. And stole the ewe lamb and prepared it for the wayfaring man. Notice what it says. And David's anger was kindled. The man that has done this thing shall surely die. And the lamb shall be restored fourfold. I imagine since he was probably in his court surrounded by his counselors. <laughs> He looked at him and said, did you hear this? All right. Come on, man. The rich man stole from the poor man. David, being a righteous, just man, declared biblical judgment on him fourfold. And he shall die. All right. You boys hear that? All right. Everybody bow with me. <laughs> That's script. That's the law. That's Moses' law. He ought to die and pay fourfold. And I imagine that Nathan just probably stood there for a moment. <laughs> After all, he is before the king, and he can declare at that moment that I'm gonna lift your head because I don't like. So I imagine that he approached real trepidatiously. He was right, careful. Right, right. He said, "King." to that? What, what, what is the crescendo behind this observation about David being angry? Uh, because, because really, he, he really should have got what he deserved. He deserved to die. And he was able to restore fourfold. So why not? It's vital. But notice who he represented. And in a moment in his anger, Trayvon and Zimmerman. And in anger, everybody said, give what he got coming. Yeah, did we do it? Yes, churches rallied. Chap churches said churches <laughs> rallied. Doors were open at churches. Sermons were preached. Um, hoodies were in pulpits. Hello. Right. Uh, masses got together and they said, give him what he's got coming. And preachers were there saying, give him what he got coming. Right. News agencies were there. The world over was saying, give Zimmerman what he has coming. Preacher. It's interesting to me, and I said this to my congregation and those who I engage with personally, uh, while I think that he, he was probably guilty, but to give him what he has coming, I'm real careful with that because if I demand that he gets what's coming to him, then God will have to give me what I got coming to me. Stay with me just for a minute. See, I'm talking about who me. I figured you'd get it after a while because it's easy to look at it from one perspective. That there is no connection and that we identify with Trayvon because he was a young bro. You, you, you know how, how, how white 
man did us. He, you know, he, you know, he did us a favor by bringing us here. You know, he gave us a free ride, and brought us over, and gave us jobs. And hello, somebody. <laughs> we ain't been happy with him since. I don't know what's wrong with just ungrateful people. <laughs> White man went all the way over there, <laughs> found us, and dressed us up. Hello, somebody. Put us on a cruise ship and brought us over here. <laughs> hey, dude. <dear. laughs> Gave us jobs. Gave us work. Hello, somebody. Come on, son. We mad. We, 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 we mad. We, we still mad.
until that day. You hear what I'm saying? You, you get a clear picture of that day because the grace of God is inclusive of all the stuff that he did for you that you didn't even know about. That's right, son. That's right. But the mercy of God identifies with you immediately because you know you did it whether your husband and wife saw you or not. And the first thing you cry is, Lord... And the Lord pardons your iniquity and your sin. And then fumigates the surroundings so that, hello, y'all talk to me, y'all to be happy. And y'all don't look happy about mercy. Come on, son. But he has been merciful to us a long time. But we do not, as human beings, actually rejoice in mercy. Because when you hear it, you, you have an adverse kind of, you know. But shouldn't Christians Amen. believe in mercy? Right. If Zimmerman was your son, if Zimmerman were you, when you go to court, you would not be down there in support of the prosecuting attorney saying, yeah, what you need to do is give my son what he got coming. You're not going to say that. What you're sitting on that bench, you're asking God for intervention, clemency, above all, Lord, have mercy on my child. You're right about it. See, look, this time look different now, don't it? You, Zimmerman, tonight. Come on, son. Can you imagine what Zimmerman must have been playing when the entire world was against him? Lord, I know I was wrong, but have mercy. Now here's the thing. Did you hear? I'm going to let y'all go. I just want to put something on the ground. Did you hear juror number 28? I think that was a, the lady of Mexican descent. She said, we want it. All, of, all six of us, we wanted him. But relative the evidence versus um, the rule, he didn't fit. So we had to set it free. But we wanted it. We wanted to find him guilty. The whole world wanted Zimmerman. But now God intervenes because I've said to my congregation, if it only lasts for a month, God intervenes. You may not like the outcome, what happened in the trial, but God, over against the, the overwhelming as an evidence, set the boy free, and we mad. <laughs> we mad. You done talk about no your job? You been on the phone? You peruse the news? You want to dress up and run out and hit a whitey? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You want to hit a whitey. <laughs> because within there is this indignation. There is this rage that we feel that somehow we have been dealt another blow. But can we for one minute think about what Mr. Zimmerman must have been feeling and what if he was praying saying, Lord, mercy on me. And the Lord intervenes and has mercy. And we don't like it. But God has I'm a product of his mercy. When I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, he heard me and brought me up out of set my feet upon a rock and establish my door and then put a new song in my mouth even praises unto our God he was merciful toward me when I should have been dead sleeping when listen when you was laying on that abortion table don't you tell me that God should not have given you what you had coming your child within you is crying mama what are you doing and God has mercy on your ignorance voice of thy brother's blood is crying from the ground. What have you done? And the Lord had mercy on Cain. Okay. My brother's keeper. Why are you asking me? Because I hear a cry. The cry is is that Blood has a voice. And it's crying 
to me for justice. Mm. Yeah. Uniquely in the 12th chapter of Hebrews in the New Living Version, it says that that blood cries for vengeance. Right. Mm -hmm. But it lays the blood of Jesus over against the blood of Abel and the blood of Jesus cries for forgiveness. Zimmerman looked a little different to me tonight. <laughs> because if I was wearing his name, and that were me, and the whole world was against me, I couldn't go to pastor and tell pastor, pastor, I'm guilty. <laughs> Especially if he was African American pastor, I couldn't go to him and tell him <laughs> that I was guilty. Can't tell anybody that I'm guilty. This thing is between me and God, King David, but God intervenes. He tells David, David, I know about you. This is you. David, you committed adultery and murder. You ought to die twice. See, now, now look, 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 you have to remember, and I, and I say that just in case you're real, a, a real Bible student, that, 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 that mercy sometimes can be ugly. Right? That's right. There are some times when uh, mercy is shown to you, you rather have the Lord have dealt with the blow. He said, listen, you are going to stay on the throne, and then you're going to reign. Mm. Come on. Come on. But what David did, you have to understand that it was just not be between him and Bathsheba and Joab. The Bible says, because you have given an occasion to the enemies of Israel to blaspheme through your ass, everybody knew what he did. They lived in the same cul-de-sac. Right, right. yeah. yeah. Uriah the Hittite, one of his major captains, and the father of Bathsheba, who was one of his major counselors, they all lived in the same cul-de-sac. And, and David, when he got mercy, I'm sure he thought about it. And the Lord said, now go down there and pick your paper up and get the mail, and you wave at them. Because they're your enemies. But I showed you mercy. Can you imagine what you just might as well kill me? If I got to live with him? <laughs> well, think about it. Zimmerman will never be safe. Right, right. All right. You know you thought OJ should have went to jail. He wasn't picking him in. Whether the gloves fit or not, most folks felt that, that OJ was guilty. Now let me tell you why OJ, OJ went to jail the second time because of the first time. They gave him so much time over something stupid, but they gave him time relative to what? What happened before? When them white folk got let me say, no, when the justice system got him again, they ain't let him go. And the other day they granted him clemency and still got him. <laughs> Y'all gonna help me preach? I'm just talking to you. Ain't no need to be hooping and ain't nothing in your head. You still mad? You don't see uh, that this this crisis between Trayvon and Zimmerman, and God is trying to get you to see that when I show mercy, shut up.
start drawing and uh -huh. doing the same.
because you guys were talking about using offices to grow up to the fullness of the measure of the stature yeah. of the fullness of Christ. That's what you were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and when, when you really get into that, those passages of Scripture, you talk about the offices, and there's all these arguments about prophets and apostles and all. But, but the idea, in order to keep the argument down, I want to get to the end, and the end is, is that in the end, you look like Jesus. That's it. All right. yeah. Yeah. Now, what does Jesus look like? Jesus, it says, because they wanted to know. They said, you know what? Um, Jesus says this. He says, um, I'm, I'm going to leave you now. I'm leaving some Holy Ghost, and you're going to have power. And they got caught up and said, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. We left everything to follow you, and you're getting ready to go and leave us. Somebody said, maybe you better show us the Father. The 
mud that's on my shoes, I had to stop by the Red Sea and see the children of Israel over and the hair that's on my robe. I had to stop it. The lions did and see about Daniel. And forget about how I smell. I do beg your pardon, the smokiness of my garment, but I did have to go represent the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. And furthermore, I know that I look bad. There's blood gushing from my head and there's blood in my hands and there's blood on my feet, but I had to stop by Calvary. Hello, somebody. These scars are what I am here representing this man today. He is not guilty. Why? Because I've already paid the price. Look at my hand. Look at my side. I paid for this brother's life. Now, therefore, let him go. Now, if you cannot rejoice in the mercy of God tonight, Call him up and tell him what you want. 